We're going to be using JMP throughout the course a lot as a statistics analytical package and as a graphing package. So this video is going to focus a little bit more on the graphing aspect of it. What can we do with Graph Builder? How can we make different graphs? So I have here the three sample data sets, one of which plots a whole bunch of categorical variables against counts. Uh, we have continuous variables against each other. And then we have a mixture of continuous variables and categories. Um, so in lab, you were asked to create a pie chart using this data set. Um, and that's because this data set is basically comparing different counts of things. So if we want to do that, we can open Graph Builder. We want to put our counts on the y-axis here. We'll put our tax on the bottom. We could leave this right now as sort of a bar chart of different counts, uh, but we're going to change this into a pie chart. Then we can split this into site and date. And you know we could qualitatively look at this, so we might say, okay, so in week one we have this Bacillary officiae as kind of a dominant species, and then three weeks later, two weeks later, we kind of switched to this more diverse population. Uh, and later we'll cover kind of a statistical test to formally compare to these change between days. But for now, we'll leave this. So we'll hit done and this will leave us with a lovely set of pie charts. Our next data set we wanted to look at was looking at this melting point of steric acid over time. So again, we can plot this. We can put steric acid's time on the bottom here. We can put either both of these on the same axis by shift clicking them like this. Uh, if we want, we can put them on separate axes. So we can put one and then the other. Potato, potato. Um, one of the things that we do see here, we have all this white space on the side. So we're going to want to format this. We're going to want to change our axis here so that it's a lot nicer. I'm not going to worry too much about the X, but I am going to change the Y here. And I'm going to go a little further. All right. And then I don't know where my control panel went. There it is. I'm going to turn off this smooth line. See how there's this little loop? I don't want that. Uh, so in this case, this is sufficient for plotting this data set. Depending on what your data set is, you might want to fit a line to it, which you can use with this button. And then you can tell me what are the formula for that line? How, uh, how good is it? All right. For these graphs, it's generally a good idea to turn off the, ax uh, the titles just because we don't need them. We use the titles to, or we'll use figure captions to explain our titles. And for something like this where the axis is, the data is clear, we don't need a legend. All right, so last but not least, we're going to make a uh, a bar graph over here in studio you're gonna make a lot more than what I'm gonna show you here uh, but again we put our categories on the x-axis our continuous data on the y-axis I'm gonna change this to bar uh, I'm gonna put errors on here so I like standard deviation and then I'm gonna shift click the dots to get my points back and now I want to change these so that they look nice and pretty so in general I want the most hard to see but important element of my data to stick out. So I'm going to make my error bars very dark. I'm going to make my data points lighter and my error bars lightest. So I can just kind of right click this background here to get customized. I can right click these to get different options in the customized menu I can change the ranking so I want the error bars oh here first we'll make the error bars line size 3 they closed when I did that 
right, so that made them fat. I want to make them black, but there is a thing with the air bars where you can't make them perfectly black. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit and make them 2, 2, 2 on the black scale. And that'll make them real black. Now, if you notice, you'll see that my air bars are currently underneath my dots, which I don't like. On the left here, I can change where they are so things on the bottom show up on the top. Why? I'm not sure. Um, but now we have a graph here. Uh, I'm going to hit done, and then I'm going to point out again, I really don't need this legend here. It's not telling me anything useful. I don't need this title because it's going to go into my figure caption, and I don't need this footer either because it's going to go into my figure caption. So now I've got my three graphs here. Um, I do want to export these so that I can you know, either upload them to Padlet or put them in a lab report, share them with my teammates. Uh, so the kind of easiest way to do that is just go to File, Export, Image, save it as PNG, click Next, and then put it in a location that you're happy with. Uh, alternatively, if you're on Windows, you can hit Windows Shift S to bring up Snip. If you're on Mac, you can hit, can hit Command Shift 5, I believe, uh, to bring up that snipper. And then you can just snip out this and take a screenshot of it and it'll be on your clipboard. Uh, depending on how high resolution of an image you need, they both work pretty well. Um, I remind you that when you take a screenshot that way, it is actual size. So if you make this physically larger, uh, it'll show up as higher resolution in your image. But you may have to do things like play with the font uh, of your axes. So that Almost anything in JMP, you can edit by double-clicking or using this red arrow. So if you have specific formatting desires, uh, that's one way to get to it. The only thing that's a little odd is if you want to rearrange this axis down here, uh, you have to do that by changing the value order of the column. So this is categorical data. If I double-click here, I can go to column properties, value orders. And then I can just rearrange these. And notice that as I rearrange them, it'll move them around on my column when I hit apply. Uh, so this is useful when you have a natural sequence to your data. Uh, or if you have an experimental reason for placing them that way. For instance, you might want to put your negative control on the left and your positive control next to it or on the far end. Uh, you might want to sort data by how tall the column is. So for here, we might put column four first, and then column five. Column three last. And then you might leave it this way. All right. So with that, Thank you for watching, and in video we'll ask you to make a few more graphs, so just to point out where those are, we've got a histogram here. Histograms you typically want to put on your x-axis or else they show up kind of sideways. You can change the binning option here, so if you add more ticks, it'll break down these bars. You can color it, you can wrap it, you can group it. I'd recommend either the color or the wrap. You'll get to make uh, these bar charts. Sorry, these box plots. These are the same things as making the bar charts, like the exact same thing, just a different shape. These are also good visuals, uh, not to bias you for studio. Um, so with that, thank you. Have a good night.